way what's coming out of the world, like I said before, is the dress code. I would dress code. That mainly for the sisters, that mainly affects the sisters more. You understand? Because we wear fringes, but the sisters are doing what in today's day? They're wearing everything. Right. They're doing everything. The Lord said, don't do that. Give me second Timothy. Oh, that's good too. Hold that. Hold that. And give me second Timothy too. And this is something that, and I know a lot of times, uh, they see us on the street and think it's only men in the congregation. We got a lot of women in our congregation. But you never see women on the street. They're not allowed to teach the Bible. So when you see the pastor in the churches and women, that is, I don't know what Bible they read. In the New Testament alone, it's like in it three, four, five times. So I don't know what Bible they read. But not what women's not supposed to teach. That's how you don't see no women out here, you know, holding posts with us and all that. You ain't gonna see that. But when you come to the school, you're like, oh, hey, they all, you know, it's not. That's a lot of women and kids. You know, our families there, obviously. Come on. Uh, I want two. I want uh, first Timothy. First, first Timothy is two and nine. First Timothy, chapter two, verse nine. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So women are to adorn themselves in what? Modest apparel. So modesty means what? You're covering yourself up. <laughs> this doesn't mean that you're gonna look out of style. Right. You know what I mean? It, it, it's no way because Sisters have been putting together clothes and making themselves look good for many, many years. So I don't see why a skirt should stop them. Because I see the sisters in our school, they come, in, they come crazy to the point where we had to put a dress code on them and say, listen, you have to wear, we have to get them a, a garment because it started to become, you know what I mean? Everybody's coming extra fresh and like, they're getting crazy. So we have to, you know, cover them up. So, th so there's no excuse for a sister. This is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Read on. With shamefastness with and sobriety. And sobriety. Come on. Not with broided hair right. or gold. Right. But that's going into, like I was saying before, becoming so glamorized because you have the means to do that. But there's other sisters that don't have the means. And now it's, you know, they're coming to the school to learn. And now it's turning into something different. You understand? That's why within us, you don't see none of that garbage going on. We have to be water. That's what the Lord is about. Complete water. You understand? That's why you don't see the woman out here teaching. Why? Because, oh, but I know the scriptures too. Yeah, you're supposed to know. Why? Because it tells you straight that what? They have to raise up the children. So the kids are with the mother most of the time. We know dads. I got kids. I have to spend time with kids before. But most of the time, it's mommy. So mommy got to be able to say, hey, put the fringes, make sure your, your skirt is on, make sure, young man, da 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 da, show him a little script. By the time he gets to you, let's say, I don't know if y'all married or whatever, but by the time he gets to you, it shouldn't be, oh, daddy, I didn't know I was supposed to put on my fringes today. What's that? No, you should have been known that. You understand? Y'all married? No? How long? Four years? Oh, right. Exodus 22 and 16. Let me show you something. <laughs> yeah, let me show you something because this is something, we just pulled out something for the sister. Okay, we can go a little deep as far as some wearing the skirt, things like that. Okay, but sis, this is something that will not cramp your style. You're gonna still be looking right, you still be looking good, you can wear your shoes, you can do whatever you want. But you gotta cover yourself. I mean, you're not you know, crazy enough, but you know, there's. You, you understand. All right, Exodus 22, 16. Listen, I want both of y'all to listen close. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid, that is... If a man entice a maid. This is not talking about a woman who's cleaning your house. This is the old English word for a woman. So if a man entice a woman, if a man has game to get that woman, this is what the Bible is saying. That is not betrothed. She's not betrothed. She was not betrothed to another man when you got her. You guys met, whatever the case is. You making it happen. And lie with her. And do what? And lie with her. And have sex with her. You don't have to answer the question right now because you've been together for four years. I'm going to assume that that already took place. Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall do what? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. You got to take this woman to be your wife. This is how the Lord gets down. Why does he do this? Give me, uh, give me, oh, stay right there. Come around me, uh, 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 what? 22? What are you talking about? No wars of the daughters of Israel? 22, 13? Exodus. Exodus 22. Exodus 22. Why? Because you see, today what we got? Sisters sleeping around with many men. Men sleeping around with many women. You understand? The Lord is not with that. Although when you read in the Bible, you say, man, but this guy had four wives. This don't look at that right now. Because that was a different state. The most I'll let you know why those things are. That's what I said, right? Deuteronomy. Right. It is Deuteronomy, right? 
Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17 There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel There shall be no whores of the daughters So that word whore and whore, that's it There shall be no whores of the daughters of Israel How does the Lord make that happen? By putting the laws in here to make sure So now when we in our school, right? In our school, we, our school, we call it, that's what we call it, the school or you want to call it the church, it's up to you But we're all over the country, internationally, we got thousands and thousands of members So now, in those schools, we have men who are raised up above it to do the judgment. So now, let's say for instance, you would have come in with your sister. You learn it. After a while, brother's gonna say, is that your wife legal? You're gonna say no. Brother, we're gonna take you to the scriptures and show you that's supposed to be your wife. If you told me or told me about the actual paperwork, it's a bust. Some people were gonna tell you, oh no, you just need to be married in front of the eyes of God. No, the Lord wants you to have paperwork. Why? If something happens to you, what is she going to receive? Nothing. Everything's going to go to the state. The Lord is about order. These are the things that we do inside amongst our people in the congregation. No man is going to come in there, see a, a young lady looking pretty, and start, yo, what's up, man? That's never going to happen. We see that, and we see everything. So we in there, we see a brother start talking. All right. At the end, what's up, man? You know what? Uh, no, I don't know. She's talking to her. Oh, now she look good. She look what? You got a job? Uh, now looking for it. You have no job. No, what you, what you need a woman for? If you don't have a house, a job, and, and some way to take care of her, you're not getting married in our congregation. Right? This is not dead serious. We're going according to this. We're not playing games. This is not the church. You meet one girl, you like us, and you up. Oh, I don't like her. She made me upset. Oh, I'm going to go to the other one. Oh, she said that my mother was ugly. I don't like her. I'm going to another one. Never. This is not going to happen. So when you come in to Israel, the true understanding of the Bible, you gotta be for real. You understand? Even if we didn't understand it when we first got there, we had to get on point. You understand? Brothers came in, a couple brothers here came in with, just like how you all came in. Brother said, yo, you gotta marry that sister. Uh, you know, I've been with her for a long time, but we lived together, bro. Oh, okay. They went to camp because they they heeded the word of God. Read Tobit chapter 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand, and gave her to be the wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses, take her after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. Right. And now, now let me just, he said, lead her away. Lead her away to where? His mommy's house? You can't live with moms and marry wife. After have your place, that's why he said, hey, take her, right, over to your father, meaning in your, because wherever that man was from, he was going to take the sister and go back to that land. Verse 14, and he called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenant, and sealed it. An instrument of covenant. That's your, that's your marriage certificate. How do we know there's a marriage certificate? Because in Matthew 19, give me Matthew 19, it talks about divorce. That's another thing, divorce. There's no in divorce, there's one way for you to get a divorce, bro. That's if your wife commits adultery. Alright? If your husband commits adultery, you can't divorce him. I know. It's rough. It's rough. It's, <laughs> sis, I see it. I see it, sis, but that's how the Lord deals. He's very serious with the women. He does not play with y'all. He's very serious because, remember, the whole nation is coming out of y'all. Although the nation lies with the man's seed, all the children are coming out of y'all, so he cannot play games with y'all. He doesn't want you going out there, laying with another man and coming back to your husband. That's out. And I'm Right. Go to the point. Matter of fact, you're hold on, hold on. Wait till the brother goes. I'm coming out there. I see what you're saying, right? All right, because I want y'all to hear this about marriage. Very important. I'm going to talk to y'all about marriage because I see what's going on. All right, because in reality, y'all are together. There's really no reason why you shouldn't be married. You might try to find some reasons. I'm not sure. I don't know what he wants to do in his life or what she wants to do in her life. Listen, at this point, let me ask you a question. You guys graduated college already? You work? You work? This is a marriage. Christ no, I'm my marriage, right? Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Sorry, 
Verse 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife. Right. So a man is going to leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife. Now you become the unit. Now you are the family. And they twain shall be one flesh. Right. These two will become one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Right. You heard that term many times. God put together, let no man put asunder. Right? They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce and to put her away? Right. Because back then, there was divorce. A man could go to Moses and say, Listen, I don't like the way my wife is acting. Which we mean. Yeah, I don't like this, I don't like that. She's doing this, she's doing that. Moses is like, oh my God. Yo, just put that in me. Go ahead. Divorce her. You understand? You just can't go back to it. So the disciples are saying, so why Moses did that? This is what Christ said. Verse 8. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Right, from the beginning, it was never meant to be like that. But what? Moses communed with the Most High. So the Most High allowed him to do that. Because Moses is going to go crazy out there dealing with these people. Our people are crazy. They're not right in the head. So Moses was dealing with it every day. He was weary. So the Most High allowed him to do that. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, Whosoever, sh whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication. So, so Christ is telling you right now, your wife does something against you as far as sexual sin. Go ahead. Other than that, though, and shall marry another. Oh, and shall marry another woman. Now you put her away because you didn't like her bread, or you didn't like the way she cooked it, whatever. Then you ain't got another wife. Committed adultery. That's adultery. Period. In the story, it's adultery. So as long as you marry to that other woman, you just commit adultery because you put this woman away. Go ahead. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away. And whosoever marrieth this sister, because she got put away for no reason, come on. Do commit adultery. And that person is committed adultery. So without knowing the scriptures, these are the things that our people get into. And this is why us as a nation, while we suffering like this, the Most High is dealing with us. With law. You might say, I didn't know that. The Most High don't care about that. He, ignorance is no defense of the law. You hear that in today's time. Right now, if you if you make a right turn on this bread and you say, wait a minute, in, in Maryland I can do that. The cops are like, listen, man, this ain't Maryland, bro. You should have known that. Now take this ticket. You understand? That's how the Lord is dealing. So the Lord is like, listen, you didn't know that's true. I ain't gonna break your whole neck, but you're gonna feel something. That's why you gotta know we gotta come back like that. It's serious. You know what I mean? And it's not, listen, give me the thing where it says it's not hard. The man was not hard. It says, I don't want you getting nervous. I don't want you getting nervous, sis. Don't think your life, let me tell you something. If y'all come in, your life gonna change for the better. When I say the better, meaning that you're gonna you're gonna see the order, you're gonna be like, wow, this is this is crazy. This, this is plain order. You're gonna be you're gonna see the world very clearly after that. It's not gonna be no, damn, I wonder, I wonder how she thinks about me. You know what I mean? No, it ain't gonna be that. When you at work and you in these different places, you're gonna know exactly what people think of you. Just the movement alone because the scriptures already told. You, what the other nations think about you. You understand? It's plain and simple. But we make it hard because we're trying to assimilate into a, a place that we, we cannot assimilate into. It's not made for us. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not hard. Let's just do it. Let's be as a nation. You know what I'm saying? When, when this particular school started back in, I think it was 03, there was one, there was two brothers. Two brothers and their wives and their children. Now, it's thousands, I don't even know how many of them. You understand? Why? There's a couple thousand, a few thousand actually. Why? Because now the people are coming back and they're recognizing who they are. This is us. It's not a religion like the brother brought out earlier. This is just us, period. So without this, we're really nothing. That's why Christ said that. Without me, you're nothing. Because you run around here trying to be. Yeah, you want to be. You live like Edomite. You want to live. Well, I'll say Edomite. So for a white man, he's different people. Right. You, it's not going to work. You might get to a certain level. Everybody has a certain level of education, got a certain job or whatever. But you're never going to break through. You understand? You're trying to fit in, but you don't. It's not going to happen. It's just not gonna happen, you know? So these are the things that we bring forth when we come out here and teach. We teach them the law. So you don't break the law. Like, bro, like, you brought out about the beer. You said you knew about it. So if you knew about it, you have to keep it. I know. I want to tell you something. If I come back up a beer, I get sick. If I come back here, I get sick. 
Yeah. Yeah. Six, six, right now. Yeah. We have to. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, you got. It. Yeah. yeah. In the Bronx. In the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to go. I want to learn more. Yeah. So what? What? What's the date? Seven. Yeah, seven is today. It's right after this. When are you guys? We're over there today. Right after this. And uh, and also we have class. Shalom, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.